You're here with Hannah Weir. I'm a multi-passionate creative podcaster, speaker, and a certified meditation and mindfulness teacher. This podcast is designed to inspire a new way of being, living in the moment with more ease and alignment with our true selves. I'm on a wild journey of self-discovery and love, and I'm here to share that journey with you so that you too can fully embrace and express all that you are. Thank you so much for being here, and I really hope you enjoy the episode. Hello, and welcome back to the podcast. You're here with Hannah. I'm here with gorgeous little Nala. (laughs) She's curled up next to me in a ball. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see her. And welcome. Welcome. I'm really excited about this conversation, but before we get into it, let's pause and take a nice deep conscious breath. And let's do that again, inhaling fully and exhaling, let it all go. All right. Well, today I want to talk about what it is like being a multi-passionate person. And I kind of wanted to introduce you, if you haven't heard of this concept, this idea of being a multi-passionate person, I wanted to introduce you to this because it's something that I came across many, many years ago through someone called Marie Folio. You may have heard of her. She's a very well-known speaker, podcaster, author, thought leader, And she has had a really big impact on my life and my journey, my spiritual journey, my personal development and growth journey, my self-discovery journey. She has had a really big impact on me and she introduced me to this concept of being a multi-passionate person. Now, she actually refers to it as multi-passionate entrepreneur because that's how she identifies herself. But I've heard this term multi-passionate, this concept come up quite a bit more recently in the last few months, six months or so. And I've also heard of a different, a few different ways of referring to this. So what is a multi-passionate person? Well, from my understanding, a multi-passionate person is someone who has many interests and also someone who just has a passion for life. And so it's not that you necessarily have all these different passions. It's that you bring a sense of passion to many different areas and facets of life. And so it's been coming up for me more recently. And in fact, it's part of the reason why I decided to rebrand and change this podcast and my whole business, my whole brand that I had created, which was Kindful Co., because I felt like that was really limiting. I felt like I was putting myself into a box of just being a meditation and mindfulness teacher when really I have so many different interests and so many different things that I'm passionate about. And I know now after getting to know myself over the journey that I've been of self-discovery, but also over the course of my life, I know that my interests are always changing. And now I can't speak for anyone else. I can't speak for you, but I would be interested to hear or to see if this resonates or how this resonates for my listeners, because chances are, if you found me and if you found this podcast, then you are also someone who is quite creative or interested in creativity and interested in lots of different things. And so it's given me kind of coming across this term and really embracing this being a part of who I am, being a multi-passionate person. It's really helped me to have so much more compassion for myself and how I operate because I, in the past, used to feel like it was a flaw or something bad about me that I wasn't able to always finish projects or I would get really into something and then a few months later or even a few weeks later I would have completely lost interest and have put that to the side and I felt like that was something that was wrong with me but I've just come to realize that 
it's just how I am. It's just how I operate. I'm always looking for new things that excite me, that, um, that I feel passionate about, that I want to try, that I want to learn about. And that's not a bad thing. That doesn't have to be a flaw or I don't have to perceive it as a flaw. It's actually a superpower because it makes me curious. It makes me in awe. It makes it, uh, brings up this feeling of wonder and joy and excitement to think of all the different things that I can try, that I can explore, that I can practice and play with. And so how has this influenced the way I see my work and my business? Well, to be honest with you, I don't entirely know how it's going to look moving forward because right now my income is coming from lots of different little areas. Like I have a few small businesses that I work with. I'm helping a few practitioners um, in the health and wellness space with creating content and with getting their social media and their websites up and running. So I'm kind of drawing on all these different skills that I have. And I'm noticing that when I let go of needing to control my income or my work and how it looks, opportunities find me. Things just seem to kind of come up for me. And I think I even mentioned this before, like life is always providing for us. It's just that we get in the way. We think that it needs to look a certain way, that it needs to fit a certain mold. And Life has really shown me over the last few months that I can let go of some of that control. I can let go of needing to know how it's all going to pan out and how I'm going to make a living, how I'm going to earn an income. And sure, it's not really where I want it to be, but I still have enough. I still have everything that I need and I'm still able to earn an income through all these different avenues. It doesn't have to be in this traditional sense. And so it's really exciting actually, because it's almost like since I let go of Kindful Co and since I let go of this idea of how I thought the brand should look and how I thought that it should make me income or should bring me, you know, a livelihood, create a livelihood for me, it's opened up so many more possibilities of how that might look. And so my intention now is to kind of build my life around this idea of being a multi-passionate person. And so I'm kind of in the process right now of creating a new website. I actually, I'd spent months building a website for Kindful Co. And I've just had to well, I'm not letting it all go completely, but I've just had to completely reimagine it. And now I'm just thinking, well, like, how can I make this work for me and work for how I operate? So I'll give you an example. Wouldn't it be amazing if I could just have like a homepage or a website where people can come and they can find whatever it is of mine that they want to interact with? So if they are interested in learning about meditation and mindfulness. They can find the courses that I have. So I've got a section for that. If they want to learn about creativity or nail art or whatever other interests and things that I've created over the years, I can have a space. Like I have an online course on nail art for beginners. I don't know if anyone even really knows about that because it's just kind of, I created it and then I put it out there on Skillshare years and years ago. But like, wouldn't it be great to have some sort of a space where I can put everything and have it just in different sections and people can find and take what they need. And then if I have new interests down the track, which I of course will, then I can create a space and a home for that too. So coming across this concept of being a multi-passionate person and really embracing this over the last little while as I've kind of been reintroduced to this idea it's just again really been such a permission slip for me to do things differently to not have to fit into the traditional mold that society has created for someone like myself and 
I feel like nowadays there are so many opportunities for creatives, for multi-passionate people, for people who may have many different talents and skills and abilities, which I think we all do. I think we all have so many different multifaceted parts and aspects to ourselves. We may not realize it, but I think we do. I feel like this day and age that we live in, there's so many opportunities for us to be able to break that traditional mold of how things need to look and make these things work for us. And it really has been such a process to come to this understanding. And I feel like I'm still challenging these thoughts that just because I don't have a traditional job or I don't make a steady income like I used to, that that is failure, that that is a bad thing, that that means that I'm not succeeding. I get to define what success looks like to me and success looks like having the flexibility and the freedom to be able to do the things that I love. Success looks like having spaciousness in my life. Success looks like having peace and ease and the ability to be creative and playful and to really just experience a sense of joy and wonder of all of the different possibilities. So it really comes back to our attitude. And I think this is something that I'll talk about in a a separate episode because I'm really seeing just how much my attitude towards these things influences how I feel and how I see myself and how I feel about myself. So embracing the fact that I have so many different interests and that I cannot be put into a box and I cannot be defined and I cannot be labeled and I cannot live in the way that society expects me to has just been such a relief to be able to yeah just embrace embrace that and it's um yeah it's been a beautiful journey and it's still unfolding and we're still getting there but I wanted to just quickly read out a few different definitions because so I mentioned there's a few different terms that this idea of being a multi-passionate person is described as so just here from a quick google search it says a multi-passionate individual is a person who has various passions and often finds answering the question what do you want to become in the future or when you grow up difficult as they feel they have to settle down to only one thing and that is so interesting as well because I think that we put so much pressure on children growing up on what do you want to be? What do you want to be when you grow up? You know, we ask them and it's almost like this pressure to decide from when you're young. And I remember back to when I was finishing school and this question of what do I want to do now? I'm finishing school. What do I want to do with my life? I ended up going into a course that, I didn't really want to do like I it was a good fit it was in I did um, media and arts and communication and so it was a good fit for me because I had the interest in communication I am a good writer I like to communicate clearly (laughs) Uh, but I wasn't ready to make that decision and to go into committing four years of my life into this course and then When I finished uni, I got a graduate job straight away and I did that for eight years working in government and that as well wasn't really the best fit for me. I mean, it it was good in that I got to try lots of different areas of communication and media, but it, that in itself felt really limiting. So I don't know. I just think that that's, it's just really interesting that we, that this kind of, this idea of being a multi-passionate person, it almost tells us and gives us permission to let all of that go let go of the need to define it and the need to know who you want to be and also to just remind you that you can change direction 
at any point in your life. I have been a really good example of that. Five years ago, I was living in a house that I'd bought and worked really hard to buy, had a really huge mortgage. I was in a relationship that I was not happy in. I did not feel loved and supported. I was working a job that I, again, didn't feel like I was really excited about or passionate about. I felt very drained working long hours, which I've learned is not right for, not correct for me. Um, and I was just trying to be something that I wasn't. I was so busy, so stressed, do, constantly doing things. And so my life has completely changed now where I am in a completely different relationship. I'm living in a completely different environment. I do completely different work and I almost can't believe where I am. I almost have to pinch myself about just how much my life has changed. But I really do hope that this is an example for anyone out there feeling limited or stuck in one situation that you can change, you can shift direction. And if you resonate with this idea of being multi-passionate and having many different interests and feeling limited by having to pick one thing, just know that you don't, you don't. And also these different passions don't necessarily have to earn you an income. I think that's really important to note here as well is that some of these passions or these interests can just be that. They can be hobbies. They can be things that you just do for yourself and they don't necessarily have to earn you an income as well. So a few other ways to describe this concept, this term, are also multi-potentialite. And it's a term coined by Emily Wapnick, hope I'm pronouncing that okay, to describe individuals with many interests and creative pursuits. We have many paths and we pursue them all, either se sequentially or simultaneously or both. Although multi-potentialite is a modern term, the idea of a person with many passions is not new. And this takes me to the other term that I came across recently, which is a polymath. Again, I hope I'm saying this right, polymath. And this is an individual whose knowledge spans a substantial number of subjects known to draw on complex bodies of knowledge to solve specific problems. Interesting. Very interesting. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope that this has been an interesting conversation. I hope you've enjoyed watching or listening. And I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if you have any feedback. You can leave me a review or rate this podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, you can leave me a comment. I think you can also leave comments and questions now on Spotify as well. So feel free to do that. I'd love to hear from you. And if you this resonates if you as well are someone with many different interests and recognize that you too are multi-passionate. I hope this gives you a huge permission slip to just go after whatever it is that interests you, that lights you up, that excites you, even just the tiniest bit, even just the smallest bit of curiosity about something. You never know where it can lead you. And yeah, I just, I just really encourage you to embrace and express all of these different parts of you because they're all welcome, they're all needed, they're all important and you do not have to be one thing. I don't think that we can ever really be defined or labeled or have any kind of way of summing up who we are. We are so complicated and so complex in the most beautiful way we all have so many different gifts and talents and abilities, even if we don't see it. There are often things that we don't see because they come naturally to us. But you do. You are so unique. And so embrace that. Explore that. Express that. Be all that you are. We need you to be you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to seeing you and talking to you next time. All right, take care. Bye for now.
Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope it brought you some calm amongst the chaos of life and reminded you just how worthy you are. Thank you for being here and being you. There's no one else just like you and I'm so grateful to have you here and I look forward to speaking to you next time.